Hey, Josh Powers with Quixel. Today we're going to talk about projection, a very simple yet incredibly powerful mask stack modifier. So let's get started. The projection modifier will essentially let us control transform properties of the mask, such as tiling, offset, and rotation. This modifier is practically identical to the placement setting options we can find under the surface layer settings. There are three different types of tiling, tiling, freeform, and box projection. Each setting has its own purpose, so we'll quickly go through what each one does and the settings within. Let's start with tiling, as this is the one we would use in most cases of 2D surface texturing. To begin, we'll go down to the repetition sliders here. These sliders will let us adjust how many times the mask will repeat. We can control the repetitions based on axis, or we can just grab this little handle between the two and move them both at the same time. Just above repetitions are three radio buttons. The default is Tile XY, which will allow for the mask to repeat on both the X and Y axes. However, if we were to select Tile X, we will still be able to tile on the X axis, but the Y axis will no longer tile, and instead give us a black value instead of a repeat. The offset sliders will let us adjust the position of the mask on the X and Y axes. Rotate, as it sounds, will allow us to rotate the mask. However, because the objective of this mode is to retain seamless tiling, the rotation is locked at 90 degree increments to ensure tiling isn't broken. Next we have Freeform. The Freeform mode disables tiling, which allows us to be able to freely scale and rotate the mask within the 0 to 1 UV space. This is especially useful for when we create detail we want to be able to individually transform to the right size and location of the mask. And because this is not concerned with tiling, we are not restricted with incremental adjustments on scale or rotation. Lastly, we have box projection, which is the setting we would use for 3D assets. Box projection seamlessly projects the mask onto a mesh from six directions. For example, here we have a log pile mesh from the Megascans library. Let's add a solid layer to the mesh, and we'll add a mask stack. After we apply a Perlin noise pattern, we can go into mask mode and immediately spot seams all over the place, and that's because this particular mesh is very complicated and has a lot of negative space, which requires quite a few UV islands. Needless to say, we don't want those nasty seams, so to fix this problem, we'll throw on the projection modifier and use the box projection mode from the dropdown. Right away, the UV seams are gone. However, we have a few settings we can adjust to help give us the best results for this projection, so let's quickly go over them. First, we have angle and tilt. This lets us adjust the angle and tilt the projection is coming from. Below that we have a few sliders. Radius will set the softness of the blends, and height influence will blend the difference between heights at the point of intersection. Between these two settings, we're able to quickly come up with some nice natural blending for this mask. And then scale, as you probably guessed, lets us adjust the size of the mask and how many times it's repeated across the mesh. All right, now that we know how the modifier works, let's take a look at how we can use it. We'll start off with a pretty basic example on the most common use of this modifier. Here we have a few extruded cylinders on a metal surface, and now we want to add some wear and scratches on the edges. So let's first activate the solid layer, which will be our raw metal. We'll add a mass stack to the layer, and then we'll start off with a curvature component. After turning on edges only, we'll pull the right handle of the level slider down almost halfway. Now let's add a map component to bring in some scratches. We'll choose the library asset option and then we'll go to the imperfections dropdown and we'll select a scratched metal. Let's tweak the range just a little bit to get some more contrast out of the image and then we'll set the blend mode to add. Now to restrict the scratches to the edges, we're going to simply copy the curvature layer and then paste it on top. Then we'll simply change the blend mode to multiply, and there we go. So what does this have to do with projection? Well, as I look at the scratches, they just feel a little bit too large for what I'm going for, so we can use the projection modifier to make them a bit smaller. We'll select the map layer here, and then we'll add the projection modifier to the mass stack. And if we adjust the repetitions to two, we can see that our scratches got smaller. However, we can instantly see that we've got some other anomalies happening too. As it stands, the projection modifier we added is tiling all of the layers below, which includes our original curvature component as well. And this is not what we want. 
Fortunately, we can fix this very easily by locking the effects of this projection modifier to the map component by holding down Alt, scrolling over the projection modifier, and then left clicking. We'll see the layer window squeeze in a little and a small downward pointing arrow to the left. This indicates that the layer is now locked to the layer below. Now we can adjust the tiling amount of the map component completely independent of the rest of the mask. And setting this to 2 gives me the look I'm going for. Alright, next let's add some moss to this tree stump here. First we'll activate this solid layer and then give it a mask stack. Let's throw on a Perlin noise and then go into mask mode. Here's another case where the seams are pretty substantial, so after we play with the seat a little bit, we'll go ahead and fix the seam problem with a projection modifier. We'll set the projection type to box projection, and then we'll drop the height influence down to zero. And we'll set the scale to around 0.5. Because noise is procedurally generated, using it by itself often makes the textures feel procedurally generated. And we definitely want to avoid that. So what we'll do now is toss on a curvature component. We'll leave all the settings alone, except we'll bring the left levels handle up a little more than halfway. And then we'll invert the results. After that, we'll set the blend mode to multiply, and we can see how some of the details in the bark are being masked out, which really minimizes the procedural appearance of the Perlin noise. And then lastly, we'll add a gradient remap so that we can adjust the values of the mask through the range sliders. If we switch back to PBR mode, we'll now see the green coming through very naturally, which is transforming the look and feel of this texture. And if we decide that we would rather use scan data for the moss instead of a solid color, we can always add scan data on top of the solid layer and then simply hold down Alt as we click between the two layers. This will lock the moss surface we added to the visible pixels of the layer beneath. As always, I hope this video was helpful for you and that you were able to gain a better understanding of how the projection modifier can be a tremendously useful tool for creating amazing masks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.